Good morning, church. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we're grateful to be in your midst. We're thankful for the love that you have for us, Lord. We thank you that you sent your son to die for us, Lord, because of the love that you have for us. Now, Lord, as we open up thy word, we ask that you would open up our hearts, that you would lead our hearts and our minds by the Holy Spirit so that we may truly understand the truths that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Does God has a prophet for these last days? Does God have a prophet for these last days? Je- Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, was, dis- was distressed. Enemy troops were closing in and the outlook seemed hopeless. And Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast Throughout all Judah, the people began began streaming to the temple to beg for mercy and deliverance of God. As As Jehoshaphat led out in the prayer service, he called upon God to change the circumstances. He prayed, Are you not God in heaven, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Hasn't God specially protected his own in the past? Hadn't he given this land to his chosen people? So Jehoshaphat pleaded, O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. And as all Judah stood before the Lord, one Jezazel arose. His message brought courage and direction to the fearful people. He said, do not be afraid. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You would not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord is with you. In the morning, King Jehoshaphat told his troops to believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Prophets played a vital role in both the Old and the New Testament. Is it any wonder that God would have a prophet now, during the final days of earth's history? We're going to talk about that today, God's prophet for these last days. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Through those sin has ended face to face communication between God and human beings, God did not end his intimacy with humanity. Instead, he developed other ways of communicating. He began sending his messages of encouragement, warning, and reproof through prophets. In the Bible, a prophet is one who receives communications from God and transmits God's intent to his people. Prophets did not prophesy on their own initiative or their own behalf. 2 Peter 1.21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they was moved by the Holy Ghost. So fully did Jehoshaphat believe the little known prophet that he replaced his front line troops with a choir singing praises to the Lord and the beauty of holiness. As the anthems of faith filled the air, the Lord was at work bringing confusion among the armies allied against Judah. 
The slaughter was so great that no one escaped. Jazahel was God's mouthpiece, God's prophet for that special time. All through the Bible, God has given revelations of his will for his people through persons with the gift of prophecy. Amos, Amos 3 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Hebrews 1 1. God, who at sundry times and in the divers' manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God has always spoken to his people through his prophets. What about today? Are we alone today with no prophet? Are we alone today with no prophet? Revelation twelve seventeen, And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. What is the testimony of Jesus? The Bible explains itself in Revelation 19.10. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 12, 17 identifies God's end time church as having two distinctive characteristics. God's church in the last days will, number one, keep the commandments of God. And number two, have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. If the Adventist church is God's church in these last days then one, she must keep all of God's commandments, and number two, she must have a prophet. All through the Bible, God has led his church with prophets. We are still God's church, so don't we need a prophet? Especially in these last days when the dragon is making war with the remnant of his church. Prophecy is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This gift is an identifying mark of the remnant church and was manifested in the ministry of Ellen G. White. As the Lord's messenger, her writings are a continuing and authoritative source of truth which provide for the church comfort, guidance, instruction, and correction. Her writings also make clear that the Bible is the standard by which all teachings and experience must be tested. This is fundamental, fundamental belief number 17. How does Ellen White's ministry measure against the biblical test of a prophet? How does she measure against the biblical test of a prophet? Number one, she must agree with the Bible. Her words must agree with with the Bible, Isaiah 8.20. To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. In the introduction of the great count of, in the great controversy, one of her books, she writes, In his word, God has committed to men the knowledge necessary for salvation. The Holy Scriptures are to be accepted as an authoritative, infallible revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the revealer of doctrines, and the test of experience. Every scripture is, is inspired of God is also profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, which is in righteousness. The man of God may be complete, furnished completely unto every good work, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Excuse me. Number two, to our prophet, accuracy of predictions, Jeremiah 28, 9. As for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as one whom God, the Lord, I'm sorry, the Lord has truly sent. In the days when tobacco was seldom used by women and not too many men smoked, she warned Tobacco is a slow, insidious, most malignant poison. Ministry of Healing, page 327. This was printed in 1905. Scientific tests now show that tobacco is a cancer-producing agent and that lung cancer is largely caused by smoking. 
She wrote about the rise of modern spiritualism, which, which is communication with the dead. In the book, Final Events of, Events of Pri- Bible Prophecy, Chapter 2, Can Our Dead Speak to Us? She foresaw that it would become respectable among Christians. Many in the Christian world believe they can speak to the dead. When the Bible clearly states in Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and 6, For the living know that they will die. But the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Perish means to cease to exist. It doesn't mean that you go and become a ghost. Perish means that you no longer exist. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun. Number three, the acknowledgement of Christ's incarnation. First John 4, 1 and 2. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they, are, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. She writes, The crucified Messiah is the central point of all Christianity. Councils to Teachers, page 23 and 24. In Desire of Ages, she says, Christ is God. We are saved by Christ. These are her words. Number four. The influence of her ministry. If you're a true prophet, you have a good influence, do you not? Matthew 7.20 Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Sister White has written so many books on virtually every topic. Her books include The Ministry of Healing, Child Guidance, Messages to Young People, The Adventist Home, Education, Steps to Christ, Diets and Foods, the Conflict of the Ages series, which covers the whole Bible and goes into the future. This includes the book, The Desire of Ages, which speaks about the life of Christ and the great controversy, which deal with the last day events of Earth's history. These are things you need to know. Why? Well, where are we being attacked today? We are being attacked in the home. She wrote the book, Adventist Home. Our kids are being attacked. She wrote the book, Messages to Young People. Our schools are being taken over by the enemy. She wrote the book, Education. We are constantly sick and is mostly caused by what we eat. Disease is everywhere. High blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, AIDS, obesity. She wrote the book, Diets and Foods, and the Ministry of Healing. And just recently, the Ellen G. White Estate just published a pamphlet from her writings entitled, Do You Eat Flesh? Mm. And now I'm going to step on some toes, including my own. Let me read you a few chapters. <laughs> On page 7 of the book, Do You Eat Flesh? Let meat entirely alone. Again, I refer to the diet question. We cannot now do as we have ventured to do in the past in regard to meat eating. It has always been a curse to the human family, but now it is made particularly so in the curse which God has pronounced upon the herds of the field Because of man's transgressions and sins, the disease upon animals is becoming more and more common, and our only safety now is in leaving meat entirely alone. The most aggregated diseases are now prevalent, and the very last thing that physicians who are enlightened should do is advise patients to eat meat. It is in eating meat so largely in the country that men and women are becoming demoralized, their blood corrupted, and disease planted in their systems. Because of meat eating, many die, and they do not understand the cause. If the truth were known, it would bear the testimony 
It was the flesh of animal that passed through death. The thought of feeding upon dead flesh, she says, is repulsive. But there is something in meat eating. We partake of disease, dead flesh, and this sows its seeds of corruption in the human organism. Page 8 of the same book, Disregarding Light. If things were as they should be in the households that make up our churches, we might do double service for the Lord. The light given me is, the mo- is that most decided message must be born in regard to health reform. Those who use flesh meat strengthen the lower propensities and prepare the way for disease to fasten upon them. These, there are those among Seventh-day Adventists who will not heed the light given them in regard to this matter. They make flesh a part of their diet. Disease comes upon them, sick and suffering as a result of their wrong course. They ask for prayers of the servants of God. But how can the Lord work in their behalf when they are not willing to do his will? When they refuse to heed his instruction in regard to health reform. For those who think this is somehow different than what the Bible teaches on health reform, let me direct you to two books. Exodus chapter 16 and Numbers chapter 11. We find in Exodus chapter 16 that the Israelites, having only left Egypt just two months, two months, and we find that the Bible says that the whole congregation complained about not having the food they had in Egypt. They complained about the food. Here it is. They forgot about the fact that they was just rescued from slavery, but they're complaining about the food. They complain about not eating the meat and bread that they remembered in Egypt. But the Lord heard their crying. And at evening, he provided meat for them. But in the morning, he gave them manna from heaven to eat. God meets you where you are. Does he not? But he has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. Everything God does for us is preparing us to be citizens of heaven. In the morning, God moved the Israelites from a meat diet to a plant-based diet. Somebody didn't hear me. A vegan diet. God moved the Israelites from a meat diet to to a vegan diet. Once God gives us new light, He expects us to keep that new light, to be obedient to the new light that he has given us. Once God put the Israelites on a plant-based diet, they were not to turn back. Numbers, chapter 11. The story continues. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. Intense crazy. If any of y'all ever meet, ate some meat and you wanted to get off of it, there's some intense cravings going on. <laughs> so the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. There we go, Egypt again. Don't, they don't remember they were slaves, but they remember the fish. The cucumbers, the melons, the leek, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Mm. I am tired of being a vegan. Give me some meat. That's what they said. And then what they know what the Bible says. I am tired of being a vegan. I need some meat. Again, though, God heard their cry. You know, God hears us. You know, we think he doesn't hear us, but God hears us even sometimes. 
God gives us the answer to our prayers, even though he knows what we are asking for is not good for us. God gave them so much quail that there was quail a day's journey on every side and three feet high. I had to look up a day's journey, and a day's journey is 20 miles. So for 20 miles on every side of the camp, three feet high, there was quail. When God answers a prayer, does he not answer a prayer? The Bible says that the people stayed up all night for two days gathering quail. They didn't even go to, they didn't even take a rest. Their cravings were so intense that they stayed up for two days gathering quail because they was tired of manna. Two days. But wow, the Bible says, but wow, the meat was between their teeth before they can even chew it. The wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people and a plague came upon them and those who tried to eat the quail who had yielded to their cravings was buried that day. Friends, it's real when you have an addiction and you try to get off of it. The cravings are real. But God still expects us to pass through those cravings and still do what is right. He buried the Israelites in the desert because they disobeyed God. When God moves us forward with new light, he expects us to move forward and not look back. If we yield to our cravings and, to, and continue to eat meat, we will be buried just like the Israelites. Our lives will be cut short just like the Israelites for disobeying God. We wonder why we have the same diseases as the world has. And dying the same way. We are. We're dying the same way the world is dying. Why? Because we eat the same food the world is eating. We're not moving forward to what God has called us to move forward by his prophet. We still have a prophet today. Acts 3, chapter 23. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear the prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. We are being destroyed because we have not listened to, nor have we read what God has revealed to his last day church. God has revealed and communicated to his people in these last days through the writings of Ellen G. White. As you notice, these are not just American issues. These are worldwide issues. God has not, has God not provided us a prophet for these last days? He has, through the ministry of of Ellen G. White. Challenge. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Jehoshaphat is speaking to God's people. The prophets in the Bible are speaking to God's people. God sent us a prophet in our time to speak to us. God's people in these last days. Are we not God's people? Are we not God's people? (laughs) Then we also need to believe and obey his prophets so we can prosper. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do, Lord. We ask that you would help us to overcome our cravings, Lord, especially the craving concerning me. Help us to trust and be obedient to your words of the prophet that you have sent us. You have provided for us help that we need to manage our lives in these times, Lord. We totally commit ourselves to you. Help us, O Lord, to believe in your prophets, not only in the words, Lord, but in our actions also, so that we can truly be blessed by you. In Jesus' name, amen.